Hi everyone. Welcome to the session. And I'm Shavanti, your Hadoop instructor from educators.com. So in this module, we are going to discuss about our first word count program. First, we will be discussing the flowchart and the entire program including the driver class, mapper class and the reducer class and also executing our first MapReduce program using our Cloud Elasticsearch VM. So this word count program is like a hello world program in other programming languages. That means in this program we are going to understand the syntaxes, we are going to understand the flow, the execution, each and everything. Similar to how you will be having a hello world in the Java or C, C++. So in this WordCon program, what we are going to do is, in the left hand side, you will be having your input file. This input file can be anything which consisting of a group of words. And as a final result, what you need to count is how many times each word is getting repeated inside this particular input file. That means, if you see the input file as hello world, how is world, how are you? My final output of my word count program must need to be displayed how many times hello is repeated. It is one time. But in case of the word, world is repeated two times. That is in the first line and in the second line as well. Similar ways to take how how is also repeated in the two times. That means I should see a result saying R comma one, hello comma one, how comma two. Like that, how many times each of the word has been repeated? It has to be displayed as part of your final output. And if you see the flowchart, as we discussed in the last module about how your map reduce pages are getting executed. That means whatever the input file which we are having it, as a first step, this input file is going to be divided into the input split. Input split is nothing but a logical reference to your actual block as we discussed in the previous module. By default here, if you see this, it will take read line by line and your input split will be taken into these uh, line by line and also by default we have something called a text input format. So as part of advanced map reviews, we are going to discuss about those text input formats and key value input formats. There are different types of the input formats are available. All those things which we will be discussing in the advanced map review. So this input split, whatever the mapper code which we are writing as a developer, my each and every line of this mapper will be going into that program. And if it's anything, the result called hello comma one, world comma one, that is nothing but it reads this line, wherever we are having the space, it considers it as a word. That means in this, hello is one word and world is another word. Similar way in the second, how is one word, is is one word and the same with world. So in the mapper, we are going to use a string tokenizer method or else even you can use a split method. And wherever you are having a space, you can consider that as a word. And also here as a value, every place we are committing it as a one itself. That means this mapper and the reducer, everything expects our results to be in the key value format itself. That is the reason why in the mapper you can see a word comma one, hello comma one, how comma one, like that. Those are all key comma value pairs. So once all of these intermediate mapper output results are emitted, during the shuffle and the sort phase, 
all your keys are going to be grouped together and also your value I mean keys are uh, getting sorted out that means if you see this here I am having a hello only one time it is there but here I am having a how and in the third mapper also I am having the same key that means as part of this shuffle and sort this the same keys are grouped together you see the how two times it was repeated and it got grouped together in the same case with the world as well and also as the name itself is saying that shuffle and sort all your keys are going to be sorted that means if you see this it starts with the a h h i w y like this it is in the sorted manner as a developer you need not write any of the code to do this particular shuffle and sort automatically your framework itself is going to be taken about the shuffle and sort only we will be writing a mapper code and also we are going to write a reducer code and finally a driver class as well which we will be seeing in the next couple of minutes so here guys if you see the final reducer in this final reducer I am simply going to sum it up that means how is two times it is repeated for the same key so what I am doing is I am repeating it twice that means how 1 plus 1 that means Two. world is also repeated twice so world comma two like that with the help of the simple sum function which we can mention and which we can use it as part of our reducer so this is the entire uh, word count flow which always takes care about your key and value pairs itself and here to write our program what we need to do is there are three places where you need to do that when you need to write your program one is the driver class driver class is nothing but it is your program where it is starting with like you will be having a main method because we are going to write the programs in the java so in the main method you are going to set it up what are all the mapper class what are all the reducer classes which you are going to call all of these details you are going to give it as part of your driver class and if you see this for all the programs the driver class code is quite same you need not change the driver class code for any of the programs except the name like you can see what is the mapper class name what is the reducer class name and the data type Apart from that, you will not be even change any of these things. So let me explain you the word count driver program. And after the explanation, I will be logging into my Cloudera Kickstart VM and I will show you the execution of this program. As we mentioned that this is a Java code which we are writing. It is starting with public static void main. This is all the Java methods is getting started from the main method and here as the first line we are going to create a job object so what is the purpose of the job object is nothing but to the help of the job object which we are going to set it up all the details that means what is the mapper class which I am going to call what is the reducer class which I am going to call how many number of reducer I require what is the data types of my final reducer output all these things you can set it up all the parameters with the help of the job object and also here you will be having a configuration object it holds all the information related to your uh, you know related to your cluster and if you observe it here we are setting up the jar by class and the job names and whatever the and here uh, the jar by class name must need to be equal to this one whatever the class name is there this class name and this class name must be equal and here you can set the job name to your program that means in the UI you can see which program you are executing whether it is a movie lens, word count, what is the program name and here the next you will be having something called a file input format and file output format 
So what exactly these things are nothing but? Whenever we are submitting a job by executing the command called Hadoop jar, jar file name, and we are going to give a driver class name, input file and output directory. Whenever we execute the program in that format, we are going to specify our input file, that is the first argument. That means our first argument is starting with the arg of 0 and the second argument is nothing but the output directory where we wanted to store the final result. So whatever we have entered in the command line to read those values and also we are adding it as the input path and the output path with the help of your file input format and file output format. And then over here we need to set the mapper class name and the reducer class name. And if you see this, we will be having the set output key class. That is nothing more. We have to specify the data type. So what is the final data type for the reducer key and value? We have seen that hello comma to world comma to like that. That means the key is the text. That means it's a string. In the Hadoop, instead of the string, we are having something called a text data type. That is the reason why I have mentioned my output key class as a text. And output value class is an integer because hello comma 2, 2 is an integer. So here in the Hadoop, the data type will be int writable. If suppose it is a float, we would have specified it as a float writable, double writable, like that. And once you set up all these parameters with the help of the job object, finally you are submitting your program to the cluster with the help of job dot wait for completion. Just submit your program to the cluster. So whatever the other programs you take, the same code you have to write it for all the programs, but you can just mention your another program name like what is your class name, what is the job name which mapper class you want to use, which reducer class you want to use and also what is the final reducer, input and the output data type. That means output key value data type, those things which you need to specify it in this program. If you see some more details about your driver class, this class is responsible trigger our map reduce job. That means, as I specified that this is the first point of contact. That means, this is the place where your program is going to be executed and based upon the mapper class, reducer class, whatever you are setting it up in your driver class, that gets executed accordingly. And also we have seen a job object. So, with the help of the job object, it allows users to configure the job and submit it and we can that means in simple way we can set all the parameters with the help of the job object such as the number of red user tasks and you know and uh, the mapper class details, red user class details, everything. And we have also seen the configuration object. This configuration object holds all the Hadoop settings which are required to launch your application. And also, let me explain you the mapper and the reducer class as well and then we will go back to our program and see it, the execution. And if you see this mapper class, any of the mapper class must need to extend the mapper to the default class which comes with your Hadoop framework. Whatever the name you are writing it for the mapper, it must be to extend the mapper class. But what about these data types? Are not enough. Your mapper will be consisting of input and also the output. So the first two will be the input key and value data type and the last two are the mapper output key and the value data type. So this long writable is nothing but as I specified, 
for the mapper your actual input file is going to be divided based upon your text input format that means it consider it as a byte offset and entire line it means suppose in the first line i'm having a hello world so how exactly it is coming for the mapper input is nothing but it starts with the zero and it reads that is a hello world so hello and world is 10 characters so from the next it starts with the 11 and how are you the next line comes so how are you is nothing but some more nine characters for example nine or including the spaces it is 11 so from the next byte offset will be the 20 and the next line so we need not set all these byte offset in anything Originally, your program takes care about the um, this text input format. So these are all the bigger values which we will be having it. That is the reason why we call the data type with the long. So in the Haru, instead of the long, we have a long writable. And as it is the entire line is a string, so I call it as a text. And this one is nothing but hello comma one. That is a text and int writable. mapper output results and what we are going to do as part of this mapper is nothing but i'm going to read the entire line and wherever i'm having a space i'm going to divide that into the individual words so how we can do that is nothing but before that here in your mapper class you must need to override the map method in this math method what you are going to do is whatever the value which you are reading it that means the entire line which is hello world or how are you so the entire line we are converting into the string because if i want to use any of the java methods i cannot use the java method on top of the hadoop data type that is the reason why we are converting this hadoop data type text into my java with the help of this value dot to string method so it converts your text data type into a string once it is a string i can simply use the string tokenizer method or split methods there are n number of the ways you can use so in this string tokenizer method i have created now i have created a string tokenizer object and here we are passing this as a line So by default, it is having a space. So I'm just using a while loop, or you can use a for loop or do while whatever. And simply, why I'm using this loop is nothing but I have a lot of words. Suppose in the second line, how are you? I'm having the three words. So I have to navigate across these three words. When I require a navigation, I must need this while loops as well. While loops or for loops or any loop in the dictionary. So with the help of this idea, iteration has more tokens. That means I'm checking it whether it is having any further words or not. Yes. The first iteration, we are having a how. All right, that is having a word. So what we are going to do is, we are going to set it with the help of the context dot write. So what is the meaning of the context dot write? Is nothing but if you wanted to display anything on the screen. Or emit any of your values, you will be using your context dot write is a method which you will be using on setting it up. And also for the next token, we have to pass our counter. That is the reason why we are saying that what dot set a next token. I mean, we are taking that what is the next token. Like so that, you will be setting up all of these things. Until all the words are finished in that particular line, and also here you can see something called a one. So what exactly this one is? Nothing but as as for the flow chart here we are having how comma one, r comma one, u comma one as part of our mapper output result. So everything, all the values are one in the mapper output result. So the help of these. Uh, Created a final variable that is a fixed constant variable, and we assign it as a one. 
and we change it to the int writable. That is the reason why we have mentioned that one over here. So context dot write always says the Hadoop data type itself. If you wanted to directly set it up an integer, it doesn't even understand. You must need to specify it as int writable or so. So if you see this entire mapper program, for all other programs, only this line differs from the string tokenizer to the word set, whatever you are seeing, only these these lines differs. The rest of the lines will be always seen. Because whatever the program you are having, you must need to extend the mapper class and override the map method. And inside the map method, if you wanted to use any Java method, you must need to convert it to the string. Then, based upon your logic, you can write your code accordingly. But finally, you must need to have your context dot write to emit the values, whatever the intermediate mapper output results you want to emit. And also, if it is having any exception, even we are also throwing those exceptions, collide exception and interactive exceptions as well. In case if you wanted to work on these exceptions, you can even have the catch blocks and write finally blocks and you can even use the, those things similar to your Java. So if you see this map method, what we have done, as we, we have discussed that we have created a variable called one, that is the final variable, constant because it is not changing any of the values. And we are converting our input type text to the string. And we are using the split method or string tokenizer method to divide the space. And then with the help of the loop, we are navigating across the each and every word. And finally, with the help of the context.write method, we are emitting our key and value, which is word comma, once the mapper output result. If you see the reducer class, your reducer class must need to extend the reducer class over here. And also, we need to override the reduce method, similar to the way how you are overriding the map method. Same way you have to override your reduce method as well. And if you see the data types over here, these data types are also the same. Like this is the reducer input key and value. This is the reducer output key and value. And as per our flowchart, whatever the values are there, for the same key we are summing it up. That is the reason why with the help of the for loop in the reducer, in the reduce method, we are simply summing it up with the help of sum is equal to sum plus value dot z. So what it does is it adds those values. Suppose world is repeated two times. So all these records will come into this reducer at a time. So what it does is world was repeated twice. So one plus one will come up here. So the finally we are emitting the context dot right. The keys world. And the value is true, like that. Whatever the sum you got it, you will be displaying that particular sum. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the context dot write always expect the result to be in the Hadoop data type. So here sum is an integer. So I have to convert that into the int writable. That is the Hadoop data type. So we are converting into the new int writable of sum. So this is how you will be writing your mapper class, the user class, and also the driver class. So let me show you the execution of this particular program in the Cloudera Quick Start VM, which we have done this setup. Now we are starting up our Cloudera Quick Start VM, which we have done the setup in the last module. Open this, and in the left hand side you can see all of your machine and let's assume this is your Cloudera Quick Start VM. Just choose that machine and click on Start. This will start that machine. So just after logging to the machine, 
and this is the initial page uh, which gets displayed to us. So here by default all the services are up and running. If you wanted to make sure everything is already running, you can just do a sudo jps. This will display all the services related to your name node, data node and also the resource manager, node manager. All your uh, daemons will be up and running by default over here so that we are all set to run our Hadoop programs, MapReduce program. And to write our first program, what you can do is on top of your Cloudera Quick Start VM screen itself, you are having the Eclipse here. There is a search symbol, you can directly double click on that particular Eclipse. Once you double click on this particular Eclipse symbol, this will open up this page which is Java Eclipse. By default this editor will also get installed over here. So you will be already seeing this as a training project. You need not create any other projects here. So what you can do is you can directly create the classes and you can directly write the code. If you want to create any of the class, just right click, click on the new and you can simply click on the class. And you can give a name. You can remove the package if you don't require any of the package name. And here you must need to enter some of the names. Suppose for example, if you wanted to write a word count driver, just enter this as a word count driver. Or whatever the values which you require. You can just click on the finish and you can see the word count driver class will be getting created here. The similar way for other things also you can again come here and remove the package if you don't require anything and just give the name as word count mapper and also for the next you have to give it as a word count reducer like that. So these are the three classes which I have created over here word count driver mapper and the reducer and the code is attached to your uh, video itself you can directly Take that particular code and go inside your word count driver and paste the code whatever I have attached to this particular video. And the code is same guys if you see here. As I discussed in the driver program, we created the job object and then we have set it up the jar class and job name. Right? The code whatever I explained, the same code which I have pasted over here. And also we will do importing some of these particular uh, classes because when I use the job, when I use the file input format and file output format, such kind of the thing, I must need to import those definitions from the other packages. That is the reason why we are just doing the import. And make sure that whatever the class name which you are mentioning over here must need to match with the class name which you created in the left hand side. Similar case with the, your mapper code and the reducer as well. Whatever the name you have entered as part of the mapper class, the same code need to be, the same name need to be given in the left hand side window, which is word count mapper. Similar way with word count reducer as well. The names are not matching, again if we throw you the error, so just take care about these things. And finally, to execute our program and the code is same even in the mappers also. If you observe, I am extending my mapper class and I am overriding the map method. Anything the word comma one, similar way in the reducer, I am having these uh, the sum which I am calculating this. And here you can see something called an iterable. That is why I am having an iterable is nothing there. As part of your reducer input, once you can have a multiple values as well. Something like world is repeated twice, so world comma one, world comma one. Both will be coming into the reducer at the time. So there you will be having an iterable. So to execute this program what you need to do is just right click and export. Here just choose a Java, the jar file, click on next. Just mention a name of the jar file. You can 
give home cloud era this is the place where i wanted to store my program let's give any other name world count dot jar or whatever the jar you wanted to give right word count example dot jar for example just finish click on ok and if you go into your this one you can even verify it by simply doing the ls and see whether the jar has been created or not see this word count example dot jar has been just created so what we require is to execute a program we must require input file so let's create our input file over here do that either you can use the gedit or vi editor any kind of the editors which you can use suppose let's assume i wanted to use the gedit and word count input some name i wanted to give it to this and i can enter the details for Hello world. How are you? How is world? How are you? For example, let's assume this is the file which we are passing it as an input. So I just save that, and what we need to do is make sure that that particular file, what we created, word count input, must need to be available in the HDFS. I hope you guys remember our previous command, the copy from local command. What it does is it plays the file from the local file system to our Hadoop. Word count input file. I wanted to place it as a word count input XDF. This is the local file which I wanted to place it into my Hadoop distributed file system so that in my next Hadoop jar command I can use this particular file name. Because the file is already there in your Hadoop distributed file system, it is done. So to execute the program, or else if you wanted to cross verify whether the file is placed correct or not, you can even check that again. Yes, the content is there. Now we are all set to execute the program. We can submit the program with the help of the either YAN jar or Hadoop jar, and give the jar file name. The jar file name which I have created is this one: word count example dot jar. And now you have to specify the driver class. So what exactly the driver class is nothing but just now we have created a word count driver. So this is the class where you have the main method. So just copy this name because you must need to give the driver class, and then we can mention your input file details as well. Word count input CFS. Give the output directory. Give any of the output directory details. It can be the new. It must need to be the new one. So word count output directory one. Just submit the program. Your program is get submitted to your resource manager. As per our theory, what we learned, it was divided into the number of input fields based upon your content type, and each mapper will be assigned to that. Then your job is running by your application master. It's sending the status here. program is completed successfully you can even see the details over here and also if you wanted to see the output just navigate to the output directly what you have given at the time of executing the jar right so just do a ls and see you must need to see the output files in that particular directory see here one is a success file because our program is successful and your result files are always be as part of your Part files. That means I wanted to see that. Just use word count output directly one slash part hyphen one of zeros. So you can see the output result saying that 
R is repeated one time, flow is repeated one time, where in case of the how is repeated twice and the world is also repeated twice. And if you observe all the keys, these are all the sorted manners, A, H, I, W, Y. Always keys are sorted, not the values. This is how you will be executing your first word count program. With the help of the Eclipse, you have to write your programs like this. And also, if you wanted to see what are all the jobs were executed before, you can open your browser. And even simply go to the 1960 page or else even once you execute the program, you can see a URL over here. See this, the URL to track the job. So just copy that particular URL, go into your browser, you can see all the job details related to the program which you have run. The word count is the job name which I have edited with the help of my driver class. Job dot job and who am I? I'm a Cloudera user. So who submitted and how much time it has taken to submit, finish. All these details which you can observe it from this particular place, which is a job history server. This is how you can execute your MapReduce program. Summary. So in this module, we have discussed about the driver class mapper class and the user class and also we have seen this driver class with the help of the job related uh, parameters we are setting it up related to the mapper class, user class and the number of user tasks, all the data types, all of these things are set by the job related job object and in the mapper class we extended the mapper class and override the map method. In the user class we extended the reducer class and override the reduce method. And we submitted our job with the help of the Hadoop char command. Finally, we saw the output result. Whatever the folder which we have mentioned as part of our Hadoop jar commands. And also we need to make sure that the input file must need to be presented in the Hadoop distributed file system before we are executing the job. And also we need to ensure that the output directory is always a new directory. Otherwise it throws an error saying that the output directory is already presented. Thank you. Let's catch up in the next module and let's discuss the another topic.